Hey, and welcome back. This is How to Use Everything in Machine, part three. Layering samples and instruments is my go-to strategy when I want to beef up tracks and make them sound huge, but also well balanced at the same time. When done correctly, layering can save you lots of time you would otherwise spend with post-processing your sounds and adding EQ and effects to them. In Machine, the fastest way to layering are the so-called link groups. So let's take a closer look at those. Whenever you play a sound in Machine, it is selected and you can open up the pad mode menu. Here you find the link group settings and link groups are in a way similar to a soccer group. When I take a couple of sounds here from my drum kit and I put them into the same link group, they're all going to play together at the same time. Let's make a little example. I select bass kick number one and use this knob to bring it to link group number one. I have another bass kick here with some more transients and a little bit more snappy attack in the beginning. I'm going to take this bass kick and also apply it to the same link group. So now they're playing together. There is also a third bass kick over here, which is a more sub heavy 808 style bass kick. And let's take this, bring it also to link group number one. Listen to it. All right, now we have this combination of the first one, which is giving us a saturated mid range together with the second bass kick and it's transient on top, plus that subby low end from the third bass kick. So all in all, a very holistic bass drum sound already. And I'm going to be a little bit more experimental now and grab a fourth sample, which is more of a hiss noise sound effect. Let's also bring it to the same link group and wow, if I play this now. can bring down the volume of that hiss a little bit. And And it sounds much more stadium-like right now. It's really like a huge kind of drum sound here on the bass drum happening. You can use the same technique not only for individual drum hits, but also for whole instrument presets. So I got this massive preset right here. It's called Helix. And when I switch this to keyboard mode, and start playing a little melody. Let's move over to pad mode quickly one more time because here I have another preset called Boomer, which is this more like arpeggiated rhythm going on here. It's also coming from a massive and I'm gonna take these two massive plugins and bring them to the same link group, number two. And now they're playing together in pad mode. But also when I go to keyboard mode, So with just a couple of tweaks, I pimped my preset and made it sound much more alive than having only one of these presets on their own. So using these link groups is a fast way not only to do some kind of mixing of your drum kits, but also to do some serious sound design of your instruments and presets that you already got in your library. Of course, if you use a lot of link groups, you are going to sacrifice a lot of sounds in your machine kit. So I'd like to introduce you to a second alternative way of layering in machine using the sampler and its built-in zone manager. Let me select that snare quickly 
and move over to the software interface. Here I'm going to click that little waveform to open up the sampler and on tab number four you'll find the zone manager which already hosts our snare dreamt number one sample. Now you can go over to the browser and take any sample you want and drag and drop it over to this lane over here and it's just going to take that sample and droop, put it on top of the existent one. So I have two of those layered up right now and I can go to any other kind of sample, pre-hear these sounds and when I found something I like I just drag it over and it's going to be here. And now listening to that sample again, I hear that it's now a sound composed of three different layers without having to lose one of these other sounds. So the cool thing is also that all of these samples can now be edited together if I go to that sampler and for example I change the pitch over here it will affect the pitch of all the included samples. If you want to change the individual samples though this is possible by using the different zones in here. You select one of these samples inside of the zone manager and then you'll find some parameters down here like tune, gain, panning and a couple of more of these things. So you can individually tweak your sounds, put them all together and then have them perfectly layered on one of these pads. Next to the link group you'll find the choke groups and they are in a way almost like the opposite of link groups. If I take a couple of sounds and put them into the same choke group they won't ever play at the same time. And this was originally used for open and closed hi-hats so they don't bleed into each other like in this example. You can hear that both samples are actually playing on top of one another but if I put both of them into the same choke group you can hear that they now cut each other off perfectly. And you can use this for simple things like this hi-hat choking right here or become a little bit more elaborate like in this example over here. I have four different samples all of them are put into the same choke group number one. The first three of those are sound effects, longer swoosh type of samples and all of those are in receive mode currently. So they can actually play on top of one another unless I hit pad number four with this vocal sample which is also in choke group number one but as a matter of fact it's in send mode. So this sample is able to send its choke information to all the other ones not vice versa. And this allows me to pile up a couple of sound effect samples on top and then cut them off with only one vocal sample. You can bring life to your patterns by adding swing and using machines humanizer. These functions both come with different settings and applications. In this example I programmed a straight 16th node pattern with machines hi-hat synth and the quickest way to add swing to it is to hold down the pad itself, move over to the quick edit section over here and select the swing function. Now the 4D encoder is going to dial in the amount of swing from straight to more groovy to hardcore almost quantized to eighth notes. So let's bring this down to around 30-40%. Yes, this is where it sounds nice and musical. And let me show you another way to dial in swing. You can also go to the channel settings directly and here on the third tab you will find the groove settings with the swing amount that I've just used. 
using the quick edit. But also, there is a cycle setting where I can go from the normal eighth note cycle to a quarter note, or even half a bar cycles, which sound very experimental in a way. There's this gravitational pull of every first and third note of the beat. There's also an inversion option where the movement of the swing cycle is actually reversed. This could be really cool if you want to make shaker pattern swing and just try inverting it to the other side and make it sound more samba-like if you want. Now I want to let you know that you cannot only use this swing settings on individual sounds but also on group levels. So here you find a whole nother range of swing options. Let me dial in some more swing on the group itself, meaning all the sounds within one machine group will be affected. And I'll take it to a one quarter cycle this time. And you can already feel that there is this like gravitational pull coming in around every beat of the bar which I really like. And I bring in some more elements of my song and wrap it up with going to the master level. And here I'm gonna hit an even more exotic swing cycle, like a whole bar and bring it to radical 75%. And now you can really feel all these different swing levels working with each other, coming into action, leading to a kind of an abstract rhythm which still captures a whole lot of groove in there. So feel free to experiment with this feature or just keep it simple and swing something here and there to make your patterns come alive. Once you applied swing to an individual sound in machine, it's also gonna be active when using note repeat. And the same is true when using the arpeggiator. So I got the sound in keyboard mode right now and make sure to lock and hold the arpeggiator so the notes will be cycling around. And if I go to the channel settings now and I dial in the amount, you hear that the arpeggiated melody is also picking up the swing settings right away. In addition to machine swing settings, you will find a built-in humanizer. I'm gonna select all of these hi-hats playing in the pattern right now and I'm doing this by going to select mode quickly hitting the hi-hat pad once and now you see that little white frame indicating that all of these hi-hats are selected right now then I open up the variation engine and here the first tab is called humanizer and here I hold down the shift button and dial in just a tiny little bit of time shift. This means that the humanizer will look at every single hi-hat and move them back and forth by plus minus 3% and giving it that human touch. Also, I can dial in a velocity range from which the humanizer will pick note values from. Also taking a look at every hi-hat and applying a different kind of random velocity value to all of these hi-hats. So let's listen to this and apply the humanization once. And you've seen that the notes have also been moving a tiny little bit. You can apply as often as you want. And also go to more extreme values with the time shift. Yeah. 
Using machine to add effects to external signals in real time can be really inspiring and can add a spark of joy to everyone's life. Now, let me show you a quick and easy way how to set this up. First of all, I'm gonna connect the microphone directly to the mic in on machine's rear side. I'm also gonna make sure to turn up the gain fully clockwise since I'm using this Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. Next step is to enter the channel settings for my selected empty sound. And I'm gonna do this and make sure that on tab number one where it says input, I select the proper audio source. In my case, it's input one left, which is the first one here. And I can even use a gain boost here to bring the gain even a little higher. So now, after turning on this microphone, I should see a little peak going on here. Yes, exactly, this is what's happening. And that's all we need to get our microphone signal into machine itself. So from now on, it behaves like any other sound source in machine. I can go to the plug-in section here and hit the 4D encoder one time and start adding plugins to my vocal sound here. Uh, so let's add a little compressor to even out the dynamics and make it a little more present. And I move over to the next free slot and go with a little beat delay. Beat delay. delay. Turn it to, turn it to a quarter. quarter. Feedback, feedback, change the change split, the split EQ in a little a bit, little turn, bit it down, turn it down, and go, and go to, to, let's say, let's the, say distortion. the distortion. distortion. And, and we're, getting we're getting hot, hot, hot right, now. right now. So, so, so dry, dry signal, 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 wet signal, wet signal. signal. Of, course of course I can destroy it more. 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 And, and in theory, theory I, have I have access to, access to all 25 plugins inside of my machine library. And it also works with external plugins like this one here. It's called the Crispy Tuner by Brainworks. Let me bring some more reverb in and hit a melody in this mic. Oh, oh. You can see it in the plugin, how it captures all my notes. Yeah. Bring it back to advanced because this is where it sounds nice. It really, really sounds nice. Crispy Tuner Brainworks, amazing addition to every machine setup. Now you know how to set up a dedicated microphone input channel in machine. And if you want to find out more about using machine to record your vocals into the audio plugin and use it as a looper, just check out the link in the description below. If you want to expand your library and add your very own signature, sampling into machine is a very compelling way to do this. So let's explore the most important functions and capture a couple of vocals. In the last chapter, you saw me setting up this dedicated microphone input channel in machine. And this is what I'm gonna use to record the audio from. I'm gonna select an empty sound within this group over here and open up the sampler. The first thing I'm going to do is bring the input source to internal and then I'll select the dedicated microphone input channel that I also carefully labeled before. I select this channel because this will be routed into that little sound down here and I can record it from there. In case you want to do it the classic way, of course you can still select the external mono input number one left. This will do almost the same thing, but the other way is more flexible in a way that you can change the microphone gain digitally in the channel settings. So it just makes it a little bit more flexible. I'm gonna move over to page number one now. And here 
I make sure to select the looper right here as the recording mode. I already know that my lyrics are gonna be eight bars long. And what's most important are these three different target modes, which I'm gonna explain during this tutorial. The first one is called take mode. And with every recording that I do, machine is gonna store a dedicated take within that sound. So I can come in later and pick the best version of all the takes that I recorded before. So I'm gonna take my mic and hit the start button right away. In meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, Aua. Und das macht mich sauer, und das macht mich sauer, sauer. Wo soll ich bloß hin mit dieser Wut? So that's my first take. I'm gonna hit start again and record another one. In meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, Aua. Und das macht mich sauer. Wo soll ich bloß hin mit dieser Wut? Ich nehm lieber ne Ibu und dann geht es wieder gut. Uh, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, Aua. And you see that more and more takes are building up here in the left screen. Let's grab another one. Start! In meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, Aua. Und das macht mich sauer, und das macht mich sauer, sauer. You see? that I have different takes in the same sound all stored next to each other. And with these previous and next buttons over here, I can start switching between them and listening to them and doing a little audition. So when I selected the perfect take, I'm gonna use this knob and switch it to another target mode called sound mode. What's gonna happen is the next time I'm recording the vocals, instead of replacing the vocals, it's gonna add these vocals on top. All right, and we're building up this whole crew, this whole like layers of vocals. Let's pick another one. Start. In meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, Aua. Und das macht mich sauer, und das macht mich sauer, sauer. Wo soll ich bloß hin mit dieser Wut? Ich nehm lieber ne Ibu und dann geht es wieder gut. In meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua. Sweet. Let's go directly into the mixer and start panning these different takes right away. And I pan the first one, hard left, hard right, and those a little bit more narrow. Perfect. Now, once you recorded all of these vocals, you can actually just go right into the plugin chain and start adding effects right away. To all the individual sounds down here, I got like seven different ones right now, or you can put effects on the group. So you see that I just placed an equalizer over there to compensate a little bit for the sound of this Shure SM58. I also put a maximizer on it and the perform effects with a little bit of a stretcher sound that allows me to scratch that vocal right away and add these turntable stops here and there. There is a third mode called pattern. When I want to go into my next verse and I basically want to create a whole other part, I would just select pattern and with the next vocal that I record, machine is gonna create a complete fresh pattern from scratch, keeping my old pattern, my first verse intact. That's a quick and easy workflow to actually progress quickly from a beat to a little vocal draft and use this as a little sketch pad. 
It's also possible to take any signal coming out of machine and record it back internally. This process is called resampling and it's beneficial for creative and compositional, but also for technical purposes in case you want to save a little bit of precious CPU power. One way I use resampling a lot is when I work with layered samples. For example, here I have three different samples and I linked them together within a link group. Now they're all playing together at the same time. What I'm gonna do now is to select an empty pad in the same group. I'm gonna open up the sampler and make sure this time to select the detect mode because it will look at the threshold, which I can set here, over which the recording is gonna automatically start. I'm gonna move over to page number two and this time select group A with all the drums and I'm gonna hit start now. And as you know, machine is in that kind of waiting queue, but this time it's not gonna wait until I hit the play or the restart button over here, but rather wait for me to play any kind of sound. So what I'm gonna do now is I hit pad number one, which is triggering a cascade of these three samples and they are gonna be recorded together inside this new sampler unit. Now I make sure to go back to the sampler and stop the recording over here. You see that I basically comped all these three samples into one individual sample that can now be edited further. For example, I can bring down the length again and basically treat it like any other sample in machine. Also bring it to keyboard mode. Another cool way to resample inside of the software is to use the drag and drop icon that you already learned about in one of the former episodes. So I'm gonna select any group in here. It's actually this little drum pattern. And this time I'm gonna click that waveform here and I make sure to keep my finger on the trackpad. And as long as I do that, I'm able to grab that sample and bring it somewhere else in my project, even to a new group. So I will just drag and drop it over here and you're gonna see that it appeared right down here in this sound lane inside of an audio plugin. Let's listen to this quickly. The whole beat can start detuning it again. Or right away, edit it, uh, bring it to a sampler, then slice it over there. So you can save all of the sounds that you've recorded in your machine project by using the cursor and right clicking on this waveform in the editor. You can select save loop as, or if you record it into a sampler, it will say save sample as, and you'll open this up and you can basically determine a folder on your desktop, give it a name and save it for later use. Lock snapshots are key to many things in machine. They allow you to morph between settings and completely transform tracks with the push of a button. To take it even further, I will lay out and explain an arrangement technique using snapshots only. On your machine hardware, you'll find this lock button. You can press it whenever you want while a project is running. 
you can hit that button and it's gonna save all the parameters inside that machine project and allow you to go back to that point at a later point in time. I also call this the instant drop button. Let me make a little example. So a lock snapshot is almost like a safety net that's gonna catch me if I should lose track of what's going on in my project. And during a live performance or a jam, I'll be using this lock button quite heavily. Now, if you hold down shift and press the lock button, this is gonna open up the extended lock page, which is where you can save up to 64 different lock snapshots onto one of these pads. You can go by groups, there are different banks and you can switch between banks using these left and right arrows. Each of the pads that are currently lit represents a lock snapshot that I already saved within my project and I can switch between them just by the push of a pad. You also might notice that there is a morphing function over here that you can activate. Once this happened, machine is gonna morph between different lock snapshots. So that means if you have saved some parameter changes, it's gonna go there very smoothly and open up a filter just like gradually and it will travel to the next snapshot in a dedicated amount of time, which I can actually set here. So let's make an example with two bars and I'm gonna hit that next snapshot and it's gonna take two bars to get me there. And you actually were able to witness how a couple of volume faders were just going down we now only hear a bass kick and some other percussion sounds. So let's set this to one bar and go back to the other snapshot. And here all the sounds, all the parameters are back in place. In a former chapter, I was already using the lock snapshots to compare different mix states. And when I was talking about mixing, I was going back and forth between an A and a B state and I was comparing those. You can also use lock snapshots to come up with very, very complex effect automations that would take you a lot of time if you would do it with your mouse on a computer, for example. Or you can use it to start arranging. As you just heard, I have different, almost like different sections here of my song represented by the different snapshots. And what I would do is I would just bring up a sampler, target the master, record the master output of machine. And while I'm doing this, I'll be going from one snapshot to the other, starting to move some parameters. And snapshots really act as a kind of an arrangement tool, but also as a safety net to fall back into a safe space when you got lost here in your machine project. So very, very useful for many different things. I wanna let you know that it's possible at any point in time to create new snapshots just by tapping an empty pad here inside this four x four grid. Let me change a couple of parameters. Mute that drum kit over here. Go into group E. I'm gonna open up the DK of the snare drum just a little bit. And the same for the hi-hat and the DK. Raise the tune just a little bit. And I'm going back into the extended lock page and hit pad number nine. 
this just saved a whole new snapshot that I can now start to use later on in my arrangement or in my jam. And go. If you should ever change something in a snapshot and you want to basically replace the settings inside a snapshot, just hit the update button once. And this is going to override the current settings with the new ones. You can also delete snapshots right away inside the extended log page, pressing the delete button. The exciting thing is that you can trigger all these snapshots from an external MIDI controller. And this is what we are going to take a look at next. To set this up, connect your MIDI controller to your system. Here I have this Tractor Control F1, but it could actually be any kind of MIDI controller, even like MIDI keyboards work for that purpose. The next thing that I'll be doing, bringing up the edit menu over here. There's one menu that's called MIDI change and I'm gonna open up the MIDI change menu and make sure that where it says lock trigger, I select MIDI notes because this is sending out MIDI notes like a MIDI keyboard and I want those to be picked up by a machine and being converted into messages to control the lock snapshot. The next thing I'm gonna do is select the tractor control F1 input as a source and select channel one for the MIDI signal. So closing it down and they should actually be connected already and pressing a button over here. Yes, exactly. Also changes the snapshot inside of machine. So I can start my machine project and start jamming with the snapshots right away. And, and also if I leave the extended log page now, the snapshots are still accessible here from that external MIDI controller. This is especially useful if you go into some finger drumming territory. And that's my last example here for this chapter. So let's take a look at how this could help you bringing your finger drumming performance to the next level. All right, now here in this project, I have a very simple finger drumming setup right here with a kick drum snare and a hi-hat. The special thing about this is that I used the link group technique that I showed you in an earlier chapter in this tutorial. And I layered in three more sounds that trigger together with this bass kick. The thing is that I brought the volume of all of these layers down to zero and you cannot hear them unless I switch to another snapshot here. The same is true for the snare and even the hi-hat, so there are some layers that start changing when I start playing and changing snapshots here with my left hand. You can trigger lock snapshots also using your DAW. Here inside my Ableton project I have a machine VST plugin loaded into the first track and the second one is just sending MIDI information to the machine plugin. I made sure to select machine down here as a destination. Together with this clip that contains three different MIDI nodes, like a C, D and an E node, I can actually go along my loop and change the snapshots on the fly. Let's take a listen. 
And now in one bar, it changes over to snapshot three. And in the end, we go to snapshot five just for a second and turn over to snapshot two again. So you can capture snapshot changes inside your DAW project, which is pretty fantastic if you work on some more complex arrangements. I think you get the idea. Um, it's out of a sudden unlocking all of this like funkiness in your fingertips, uh, going from a very, very simple finger drumming setup to whole arrangements uh, with, yeah, played by only your hands. So I hope that triggered a little bit of your inspiration here and shows you how far you can get with lock snapshots when you think outside of the box and start connecting all of these little pieces that you learned during the course of this tutorial. Macro controls help you to access important parameters by putting them all on a common page. Machine MK3 and Machine Plus both come with capacitive knobs which make setting up macros a breeze. I got this project over here with a drum kit and this kind of acid sound playing on top. It's coming from a bass synth and it has a couple of parameters that I like to tweak um, because I want to jam a little bit and maybe record some automation later or even play a little live performance on stage. So these knobs, the filter cutoff and the decay, I'm going to pick these and make them into macros. First of all, when you hit the macro button, it will bring up the macro page right away. And one important thing to notice is that it's possible to set up macros on every level in machine. So there are sound macros, there are group macros, and also master macros. In my work, I'll be mostly using the group macros. This allows me to save all the parameters that I set up with that group and open it up next time when I want to use it again. First thing I'm going to do, look for the parameter that I like to map. In that case, it's that cut off of this filter. And the next thing I'm going to do is hold down shift and press the macro button once. This is activating a kind of learning mode. And machine is now waiting for my input. It's waiting for me to touch one of these encoders to apply it to either the sound, the group, or the master macro page. In my case, I want to bring it to the group macro page and I'm going to tap the cutoff once. There's this little white dot that popped up next to my parameter, which indicates that it has been mapped as a macro. And I can just go on and tap any of these other knobs and they will all be added to my group macro page right away. So let's take the resonance, let's take a little decay and maybe even the shape of that waveform over here. Next thing I'm going to do is I go back to my plugin page and this time I'm going to select give me, give me, give me, give me that, sugar. that vocal sound and I want to have that volume, that level of that give me, vocal give me, give me that on a knob so I can jam with it a little bit. I go to the channel settings. This is where the level of that sound is located. And again, I hold down shift and press macro once, go to the group page and tap the level over here. Now, one more example, back to the plugin page and on group level, I loaded a perform effects, a razo echo, which in that settings uh, creates a little bit of a lo-fi effect. And it's engaged by either the touch strip down here or this knob over here, this engage 
knob. And you know it by now already. I hold down shift, press the macro button, group is already selected and I tap the engage knob once. So we see it's been added to the macro page. Let's check if all of this worked out. I'm gonna hit the macro button once to open up the page. And here I see all these parameters again. Great, so I can start jamming right away. Now, let's go into the software and take a look how to label these parameters quickly. The group macro page is already opened up and I'm going to make sure to hit this little arrow down here because it's going to collapse and show a little list that pops up. And here's basically where I can select a parameter right away and change its name. For example, I could give it another name like filter. Also, there is the option to use these labels here above. So I'm going to say like acid, noise, and these four parameters are all attached to that acid noise. And this one is going to that vocal effects called sugar food. So let's call it Vox Sugar Food. It's also done. And I have a razor echo and I call this lo-fi to be a little bit more meaningful. And I return and if I take a look at my hardware now, you realize that it's, it's a much better overview. I can see what the parameters are actually doing. And also when I save this group now, the next time it's all gonna be there in the exact same way again. If you want to get rid of uh, macro mapping again, in the software there's this little reset button. So you just select one of these knobs, hit the reset button, and it's gonna erase the mapping right away so you can go on. There may be some situations where master macros might make more sense. For example, if you have a track with a lot of groups going on, you could use the master macro page to collect parameters from all of these groups and map them onto one master macro page, which you will use for your live performance later on. <music> Now, I think you are ready to take your machine knowledge to the next level. Let's connect some external gear. For this example, I'll be using a Cork Volca FM, this little monophonic standalone synth here on the side. And first, I made sure to connect its MIDI input with the MIDI out of my machine MK3. And I also made sure to connect the headphone out to one of the line ins here on machine's rear side. In machine settings, it's important to go to the MIDI tab and select MK3 as an output device. Here, I set the status to on. In order to listen to the sounds from the Volca FM, I select an empty sound, go to the channel settings, and here I'm gonna move it to whatever input I connected it right here. So this is the input one left, and now... Also, you can fine tune the input gain if you wish. Next stop is the output tab because I need to make sure that MK3 will be sending out its messages to the Korg Volca. So I just selected MK3 and channel one is already the perfect channel to go with. Now, when I hit this pad on machine, it will play a note in the Korg Volca FM. And I can also go to keyboard mode right away and use one of these scales. And 
and play the Korg Walk FM like a pro. Without knowing anything about harmony theory, I can dial into specific scales right here from my machine controller. And all of this will be applied to the Korg Walka as well. In addition to trigger notes of the Korg Walka FM, there is the special option to load up presets for the Volca inside of Machine's browser. All you gotta do is open up the sounds category in Machine's browser. And here there is a tag called MIDI External. And once that tag is selected, you can find dozens of different presets for existing MIDI gear in the result list below. So there is a lot of things that might be sitting at your tables. And for example, if I search for Volca only, I can see that we have the Volca Beat supported, the Volca Bass, Volca FM, this one over here, and a couple of other ones as well. So those are a perfect starting point and they come with prepared mappings for the dedicated synthesizers. So I'm now gonna load the MIDI Volca FM preset and I just drag and drop it over to my little sound. And going to the sound macro page, you can see that a lot of the parameters of the Volca are already pre-mapped. So I can play the Volca from Machine's Pad. And I can also start changing it right away. Now I'm tweaking the velocity parameter inside of the Volca. And you can see that by the moving value over here. So I have a little pattern that's already programmed right here to record some automation on top. Cool, I have a curve now. Let's bring in a drum kit. I can also go in and change the wavetables at any point in time. And really start tweaking the whole preset inside of the Volca or go into Machine and use one of these perform effects to change the Volca on the fly. Well, let's stutter it for a second. It's obvious that I can also start using the arpeggiator of machine right away with all the external equipment that I connected. And because I'm using the Korg Volca almost like a sound inside of machine, I can also start linking it to other sounds in machine. So in this group, I have the Korg Volca itself and a massive patch on pad number two that, oh no, it's not a massive, it's a cloud supply. It's called church with disconnected lights. And the cork and the cloud supply are now connected and play together. Let's bring it to keyboard mode. Let's bring in another massive sound called transformative and just unmute them. And with Machines Mixer, I can 
basically select the volumes of all the layers inside here. And you can come up with crazy sound designs if you combine these external sounds together with the internal sounds from machine. Your machine hardware can also be mapped to control parameters of external gear and your DAW. This is made possible by MIDI mode. You can access MIDI mode at any point in time. Machine software doesn't even have to be running to do this. You just hold down shift and press the channel button over here. And this is gonna activate MIDI mode. All of the controls are gonna light up and the displays are gonna look a little bit different to what you're used to. All of these parameters can be mapped to uh, DAW now. All of these buttons over here and the knobs and even this 4D encoder and the touch strip can be mapped to external parameters. So let's take a quick look at Ableton, which is what I'm going to use for this example. I already opened up the preferences here and what's most important is this machine MK3 virtual input. I'm going to activate the track over here and also make sure to activate the remote because I want to also map one of these knobs later to uh, maybe a send effect over here. Right, so I can close the preferences again and I'll be activating the MIDI input for this track which includes a drum rack and when touching one of these pads on my machine controller You can hear that it's now triggering the drum rack inside of Ableton. One important thing to mention here is that the different group buttons currently move between different ranges within the piano roll. So you can go octaves higher by going up here or down by two octaves by just selecting one of these lower groups down here. So group C is currently working for this purpose over here. Another thing is that you can now start MIDI learning some parameters inside Ableton to this machine hardware. I'm going to activate the MIDI learn mode and click this send a knob over here. I'm going to move the first knob of my machine and you already witnessed that it's applied the control change number 70 to that little send effect. So I can go out of the MIDI learn and add the reverb by using this knob over here. So I can come up with a customized template that helps me to control my DAW or even external gear that I connected to machine. It is, in fact, possible to customize the whole look of MIDI mode. And here is where the controller editor comes in. It's a special software that takes care of all the native instruments controllers connected to your computer. So let's move over to controller editor quickly. Here I can select my machine controller from this list above and it's already showing me the hardware inside this software interface. So I can either select a pad from the controller itself and tap it here or I can use my cursor to select any of the control elements within my MIDI mode template right here. So I'm going to select pad number five, which says E, and show you the assign page, because this is what determines what happens when pushing that pad. Currently, it's mapped to a note value. It's sending out a note value to the DAW, but you can also pick from any other functions in here. There is control change, poly pressure, channel pressure, even like MCU button and song position values can be mapped to one of these control elements. But I'll keep it to note and let you know that you can change the note coming from that pad using 
a cursor and dragging it up and down over here. So you can also directly type in. There is a lot of more options in here that would take much more time than we have in this tutorial. But something which is kind of special is that you can start changing the colors even into some very unusual color schemes that use two colors. I hit pad number one, I go down here and I select the dual mode as a color mode. And you see that there are now two options popping up for color on and color off. And I could come up with a nice um, combination of red for on and blue for off. Now this pad looks blue, but every time I touch it, it becomes red. So that's just a little bit of an idea how far you can customize your MIDI mode templates inside of the controller editor. And also you can turn off complete sections over here. So I'm gonna press that little knob over here, hold down shift on my computer key, and this makes sure that I can actually select a couple of ones at the same time. And I'm going to switch these off now. And please take a look at the hardware. The whole lane of buttons is going to become dark. All of the LEDs go out. They're taken off of the equation. So that's also very handy if you want to come up with uh, an own preset that allows you to, for example, control a whole life set right away. So controller editor is your friend and allows you to go very, very deep in MIDI mode. It's also possible to load factory templates right away from controller editor itself, as you can see here. And there is also a knowledge base article, which we linked down in the description, that shows you in detail how to load machine templates inside of Ableton. You just learned how to control your external gear and your DAW using the machine hardware. But guess what? It's also possible to do it the other way around and use external gear to control things in machine. To demonstrate this, I brought this Tractor Control F1, which I connected over USB to my computer. So looking at the controller editor, you can see that all the click buttons of the F1 are sending out node values ranging from C1 to C2 over here. I also changed the color and made sure that they all send out their information on MIDI channel one. Going over to the machine software, I open up the preferences quickly. And on the MIDI page, you will find the tractor control F1 again. And here I'll make sure to activate this input. And that's all we need. I'm going to close this down and select the group I want to control and to play with the F1 now. Hit the channel settings button. And here on the first tab called input, there is the routing settings. And I'll bring this to manual right now because here, it allows me to select the tractor control F1 with this knob over here. Channel one is already correct. That's the MIDI channel that I selected previously. And start node may also be perfect already. So let's try and hit a pad on the F1. Wow, and you see, it mirrors now the group in machine and I kind of have a duplicated group right away. The cool thing is that F1 stays connected to that drum group even when I select another group on machine. So there is this other group B with some other samples and even drum sounds. But the F1 still plays group A. Really cool for finger drumming performances. I'm going back to group A quickly because here 
there is a perform effects, um, a stutter perform effects, which I already loaded on top of group A. And I want to have one of these faders over here controlling the stutter parameters. So how am I gonna do this? I go to the software, make sure to select the perform effects module and press that little arrow down here. It opens up another section where I can start MIDI learning any kind of external control to the parameters inside of machine. Let me hit this button once and press the F1 over here. And I just applied this engage button to the sync. And let me learn that parameter next to this, which is called length. And I'm going to use this fader over here to change the length again. Okay, so the mapping is now active. We see that the CC values have been applied to those parameters. So let's play a pattern and see if this worked out. If you ever want to unlearn one of these parameters again, go into your software, hover over the field with your cursor and right click it. There it says unlearn and I can simply make that parameter vanish from the selection again. All right, folks, that was another part of how to use everything in machine. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned and see you again soon. In meinem Kopf macht's Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua, Aua. Und das macht mich sauer, und das macht mich sauer. Wo soll ich bloß hin mit dieser Buhu? Hin ich mir lieber ne Ibu und dann geht es wieder gut. In meinem Kopf, Aua, in meinem Kopf macht's Aua. Und das macht mich sauer, und das macht mich sauer. Wo soll ich bloß hin mit dieser Buhu? Hin ich mir lieber ne Ibu und dann geht es wieder gut.